thank you for listening to this recent message from the Rescue Church. We pray that God will use this message to encourage, challenge, and inspire you on your faith journey. If you'd like to learn more about the Rescue Church, please visit us online at therescuechurch.com. Adoption has significantly impacted Brittany and her family. It's impacted me and my family, and it's impacted so many others. And I realize that it matters. It matters probably both more than you and I understand. So let's pray, and then we're going to jump into the teaching for the day. God, it is a privilege to get to teach today on adoption. I'm thrilled that you have given me this opportunity. I'm thrilled that you care about kids. And God, I'm thrilled that you care about each person that's joining us today. God, I pray that you would direct my words, that they would not be just my words, really, but that they would be your words. I pray, God, that your spirit would meet each person where they're at. In each home that is represented, God, I ask that your spirit would be at work that there would be conviction where it needs to be, that there'd be encouragement where there needs to be. God, that you would be working. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, we're going to look at Galatians and Romans and a couple of books that, that Paul wrote. You see, Paul is responsible for bringing the good news of Jesus to the non-Jewish people on his missionary journeys. Paul would travel from place to place sharing who Jesus was and what his life, his death, and his resurrection meant. As a result of the Holy Spirit's work while Paul was out there doing this teaching and preaching, there were local churches, local groups of believers that were established. Now Paul didn't stay in any one place for an overly long time. He continued to pastor and lead from a distance after helping start these churches. This is really quite impressive when you think about it. You and I have the benefit of technology. We are currently in a season of meetings through Facebook Live and the rescuechurch.tv. We join for, for meetings and spend time together hanging out on Zoom. We're blessed by technology. Technology has come in clutch during this pandemic. But Paul did not have that same option. He didn't have the technology that we do. Instead, his communication with the churches that he helped start was done in large part by letters. And those letters weren't sent through the modern postal system that the majority of us take for granted. No. He sent those letters with people to deliver by hand. They would travel by foot, they would travel by boat, from one place to the next, bringing that letter. And thankfully, thankfully he did put those lessons, those, those teachings, those things that the Holy Spirit laid on his heart that he needed to communicate, thankfully he did put them in writing. Because as a result, you and I have them to look back at today. So back to the parts of the Bible we're looking at today. If you are going to follow along in your Bible, hopefully you've had time to get there and open it to the New Testament. We're going to be starting in Galatians. Now Galatians, this is a letter that Paul wrote to the church in Galatia. Galatians 3.23-26 through 26 says this. It says, Before the coming of faith, we were held in custody under the law, locked up until the faith that was to come would be revealed. So the law was our guardian until Christ came that we might be justified by faith. Now that this faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. Let's move on one chapter later to Galatians 4. We're going to look at verses 4 through 7. In Galatians 4, 4 through 7, it says this. It says, But when the set time had fully come, God sent His Son born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but you are God's child. And since you are his child, God has made you also an heir. Finally, let's take a look at what Paul wrote to the church in Rome. We're going to go to Romans chapter 8. And Romans 8, 15 to 17 reads like this. It says, The Spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you will live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by Him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. 
Now, if we are children, then heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share his sufferings in order that we may share his glory. Now, that might be a lot to follow through as I read those 11 verses. And if you weren't looking in the Bible, it certainly was a lot. But I'll break it down into smaller parts and we'll work our way through it. We're going to start in Galatians 3. In Galatians 3, Paul starts by saying, we were held in custody under the law, and he compares that law to a guardian. Now, guardians aren't bad things. No, in fact, in fact, in some cases, they're great things. A guardian is in a place to help keep a person safe. Sometimes these are adults that are being kept safe. They're adults that, that weren't able to care for themselves. Many times, they're children. Maybe Many times, it was children that were, were needing guardians. They needed someone to help protect them and care for them. Last week, I shared about my sister, Christy. Christy came to live with us, came to live with my family when she was less than 10. She lived with my family uh, for about nine years. Now, Christy's biological family had some things going on at one point, and they couldn't care for her. It wasn't that they stopped loving her, not at all. In fact, it was the exact opposite. They loved her very much. They knew that they needed help, and so they reached out to my parents and gave my mom and dad guardianship. Mom and dad took care of, took care of Christy, we loved her, and this included ensuring that she was fed and clothed. She always had a roof over her head, and we treated her like family. You see, guardians aren't bad. Paul tells the church in Galatia that, that the law, the old covenant that we talked about weeks ago, was the guardian. It was there to take care of us until we would go to our forever family. It was there to take care of us until we would be adopted. The law helped protect people in this case. Those people were, were primarily Jews that, that were being protected. It told them how to handle different situations. The law shared consequences for doing wrong. It gave people a way to be made right with God through faith, but it required animal sacrifices and there were grain offerings. There was still a way to connect to God, but it was through priests. You see, the law certainly was not a bad thing, but it was not God's ultimate plan. It wasn't adoption. Adoption was God's plan, and the best was yet to come. So Paul talks about that best that was coming in the second and third verses of what we read today. He said that when the time had fully come, God sent His Son. That's right, God sent Jesus to provide a way for us to be adopted. God sent Jesus to fulfill the responsibilities of the old covenant and provide a new covenant. It is all because of Jesus that we can be adopted. You and I can be adopted into God's family. Jesus made it possible. Now that we see that our adoption into God's family is possible, then we, then we ask a question, or at least I do, we ask the question, so what? So what does that mean for me as a Christian? What, what does it mean that adoption is possible? So adoption means this. Adoption means that when I screw up, I am still part of God's family because that adoption is permanent. Guardianship, guardianship isn't necessarily permanent. In fact, often guardianship is done because people providing care aren't trying to replace the family. They're simply acting in the child's best interest on behalf of the parents. The intent is usually as a fill-in. Sure, at times, guardians go on to adopt, but in the transition, they're not legally parents. They're, they're guardians. Now, when we adopted Kirti, we had all of the paperwork necessary for us to have guardianship. But in that first six months, she wasn't adopted. Legally, the six months after we picked up Kirti from that orphanage, she was not adopted. The truth is, in those six months, we were actually legal guardians. We could have changed our minds. Now, I can't imagine doing that, but I know that some people have had to make that hard decision and give up a child they planned on adopting. They did it for the well-being of the child or the well-being of the previously existing family. And if you have had to do this, please, please don't hear any judgment from me. I cannot imagine how hard that decision must have been. Now, if you're joining and it happened to you at one point that, that you were going to be adopted, but then it ended up following through, I'm so sorry. 
I'm so sorry. I want to believe that as bad as that situation was, those people were doing it for your good. And at the same point, I can't imagine the pain that it must have caused. So it wasn't until six months after we had Kirti that we were in a courtroom in Lee Center, Minnesota, that Kirti legally was adopted and became Kirtiana Kathleen Pickard. It was then that we went before a judge and she was officially our daughter. Officially, like no matter how hard things ever get, no matter how bad Kirti ever is, no matter how much she ever screws up, she is just like my other two children. She is the son, I'm sorry, she is the daughter, I'm sorry, of Sam and Eve. She is our child. Now we started talking about Brittany's adoption at age 12. Brittany is now married and has a cute daughter of her own. But Brittany hasn't stopped being Steve and Debbie's daughter. Adoption is permanent. The same is true for us as Christians. Regardless of what we do or what mistakes we make, we will likely make some dumb ones for sure. But regardless of those mistakes, God doesn't stop being our father. We do not stop being in his family. The point is that, that when we accepted Jesus' gift of salvation, that gift of salvation by faith, the moment we accepted that gift of forgiveness and put our faith in God to save us, it was then, it was then at that point that we were adopted as God's children. Nothing changes that. Jesus even says as much as if we look at John 10, 28. He says that, that as God, no one can snatch his sheep out of his hand. No one can snatch them away from him. He's referring to those sheep. Those, those sheep are us as Christians. Our adoption is permanent. So if we go back to our reading in Galatians and then in Romans, I should point out the idea that adoption wouldn't have been new to the churches in Galatia and Rome. Adoption wasn't a new concept in Roman culture. From what I studied, it was actually common with wealthy families and families of royalty. People wanted somebody to pass their family name onto. They wanted their, their name and, and everything that went with it to be passed along. Culturally, adoption appears to have been more common with men than when, with women, at least, at least from what I read. It wasn't that, that women or girls weren't adopted. It was simply that the reality of women and girls not having the same privilege and, and rights as men at this point in history. So because of this, because of the view of men carrying on the family name and inheritance, because of all that going through men, royal status, whatever, it simply appears that adoption of males was more common. There would have also been some well-known adoptions at this time in history. It is believed that, that Galatians was written around A.D. 48 or 49, and Romans was written eight or nine years later, around A.D. 57. During the writing of both of these books, Tiberius, Claudius, Caesar, Augustus, Germanicus was Roman emperor. Wow. So let me pause for a second there. I don't know how many of you remember those tests that we took back in school, the ones where you had to write your name in the little boxes, and there are only so many of those little boxes. In some cases, my name, which it really isn't that long, barely fit in some of those. So I cannot imagine a name like this. Or worse, what about when you were learning to spell your name? What about when he was learning to spell his name and, and trying to figure out and remember all of that? I can only imagine how hard it would have been with a name like Tiberius, Claudius, Caesar, Augustus, Germanicus. But I digress. Let's make this easier on me and you and simply refer to this emperor as Claudius. Now, Claudius's family had been ruling since before Jesus' death. And on more than one occasion, the ruler was determined through adoption. It started with Julius Caesar. Julius Caesar wanted his great nephew Augustus to rule in his place, so he adopted him. Then, at the end of Augustus' life, he wanted Tiberius to rule in his place, so he adopted him. Then came Caligula. Not much is known about him, but he is said to have been the adoptive grandson of Tiberius. Now, somehow after Caligula's death, Claudius, who was ruling at the time of Galatians and Romans, Claudius became emperor. He was actually Caligula's uncle, and was made emperor through the Praetorian Guard. But Claudius would resume this adoption trend among those emperors, and he eventually adopted Nero to be his successor. I share all of this to say, 
the people of Galatia and Rome would have been very familiar with adoption and its connection to royalty. It was a perfect example for Paul to use in talking about Christians because Paul was making the point that we are God's heirs. In Romans, he points out that we are co-heirs with Christ. How great is that? If you are a Christian, if you are a follower of Christ who has put your faith in God for salvation through Jesus, you are royalty. We may not have been born of the same royal bloodline, but like what happened with these emperors, we were added to that royal lineage through adoption. Now, if you were adopted as a child, you would end up going in front of a, a judge in a courtroom, or even if you did an adoption. And in that courtroom, they go over a number of things to make sure it's clear and on record, I would guess. One of those things that they cover with the parents is inheritance. More than once, they will likely ask if the adoptive parent understands that this child will legally be theirs and that as their legal child, they have as much right to an inheritance as a biological child. And once that child, that, that son or daughter is adopted, they are a legal heir. Christian, you and I are legally co-heirs with Jesus. What Jesus is entitled to is ours as well. That could be a sermon on its own, but let me just simply hit on two things from it. Let me simply focus on two things that that means for you and I. The first, the first is the exciting one. We are heirs to heaven. Jesus ascended days after the resurrection, and he ascended to heaven. One day, Christians will join him there. I'm so thankful this part of my inheritance. I'm so thankful for that. It is because of this that I can live in a world where coronavirus is spreading fear, and I can still have a peace knowing that if my life were to end today, if I was to die today due to COVID-19, I know where I will be, and it's going to be so much better than where I am now. The other thing that we are likely heirs to is suffering. Now, this is the part that we don't like, and so let me be more specific. This is the part that that I don't like. But if I am a co-heir with Jesus, I am entitled to whatever he was entitled to. And unfortunately, part of what he was entitled to, in addition to the awesomeness of heaven, part of what he was entitled to was suffering here on earth. Now this doesn't mean that all of life is going to be miserable. Not at all. You will have many blessings. It just means that you will likely have hard seasons. Because of the fact that we are co-heir with Jesus, and he had hard seasons that were allowed by his father, who is now our adoptive father, we will likely have hard seasons as well. And while we're talking about this, hopefully you will see too that, that hard times are not a punishment. They're not necessarily a result of your sin. Jesus was perfect and he was without sin, yet he still had suffering, he still had hard times. So don't jump too quickly to the conclusion that you are being punished for something you did or didn't do. Now we're approaching the end of my sermon today but I want to leave you with a few things to think about. First, have you been adopted by God? Is He truly your Father? If so, then everything we've talked about applies to you. If not, if you have never put your faith in God to save you, I want to encourage you to do it today. My hope is that the assurance of an eternity with God in heaven would be enough reason for you to want to do so. But if it's not, let's look at the flip side of the coin. The Bible is pretty clear that Satan is real. Hell is for real. It tells us in the Bible that, that the narrow gate is what leads to heaven and that few go through it, but wide is the road that leads to hell. Friend, if you have not accepted God's gift of salvation, you are headed to an eternity separated from God in hell. I hope that scares you enough to cause you to reevaluate your plan. Next, I want to remind Christians of the reality that you are adopted. It's final. Satan is a deceiver, though. He's called the father of lies. He will tell you that you've screwed up so bad that God can't forgive you or that you've screwed up so bad that he can't love you. He may even get you to believe that you've screwed up so bad that you're not a no longer a part of God's family. But that simply isn't how adoption works. Once you are adopted, you are God's son or God's daughter, and he isn't letting you go. And one more thing, as long as we're talking about Satan being a liar, 
Sometimes, sometimes he gives you names that God hasn't given you. You then start listening and you start accepting those names, names that go along with failure and being a loser and being worthless. The names he gives aren't positive names because the positive stuff comes from God. The names he gives you are, are negative as you battle addiction maybe or, or marital issues or financial issues or relationship issues, all sorts of other issues. He starts to give you a negative name and you begin to start accepting those names. But I want you to pause and I want you to remind yourself of who God says you are. Because from what I can tell today, He calls you child. He calls you son. He calls you daughter. He calls you an heir to royalty. And that's just what we've talked about today. Additionally, He says you are loved. He says you are forgiven. Christian, do not accept the name that Satan or any of his demons give you. You were not meant to carry those names. Now lastly, the Holy Spirit may be speaking something completely different to you today. Maybe while I'm talking about spiritual adoption, you're still back at the start of the message where I mentioned verses talking about looking after orphans. And you're being challenged to consider foster care or something like safe families or actual adoption maybe. My prayer is the Holy Spirit would convict and guide as necessary. That's always my prayer. And so if you are feeling like you should consider orphan care or financially supporting others who are actively working in orphan care, there is a chance that it is God in you that is directing you. And know that if this is something that you are interested in, I would love to talk to you more about it. I would would love to have that conversation. Like I said, adoption is something I'm passionate about. And if the Rescue Church is your church, if this is your home church, just know, I will promise you that we will be there with you on this adoption journey. If you decide to move forward, we'll be there encouraging you when it gets hard, listening to you, helping you. We'll be there loving that child. It won't be easy. I promise it won't be easy. It wasn't for me. For so many others, it wasn't either. But we'll be there walking through that journey with you. Let's pray. God in heaven, I thank you again for the opportunity to share. I thank you for the opportunity to talk, even just to look at and and see what Paul shared. To hear how Paul saw us or shared how you saw us, really, as as orphans who had been adopted. God, we are no longer... We are no longer out there separated from you. We are actually in your family. You are our Father, our Father God. We are co-heirs with Jesus. God, may that be an encouragement to people today. May we be reminded today of who we are in you. And God, if there is a person right now who, who doesn't know you, God, I pray, I beg that your Holy Spirit would convict that that today would not end without that person truly seeking to know you personally. God, bring them to a point of having to make a decision, please. And God, if there is somebody that is considering adoption, that somebody that is saying they feel that you are leading them to get involved in orphan care in one way or another, including adoption. God, that you would encourage them, help fill in the details, help make it clear to them. Thank you, God, for who you are, and thank you for who we are because of who you are. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us. Like I said, this is a topic that I'm extremely passionate about and I love talking about, so I'm glad you were here to to, to be a part of it today. As we wrap up, as we come to the end, I want to once again say congratulations to our graduates. Graduates, I know it's been a a year that, that hasn't been what you expected, and I'm sorry about that, but I hope, I hope you know that we're proud of you, that we're We're proud of the accomplishment that it's no small thing that you were able to to complete high school for the the ones that are completing high school, those that are completing college and your post-secondary stuff. That's awesome. We truly do believe in the cases of all of you 
that the best is truly yet to come. So we do want to wish you the best there. And for everybody, I want to encourage you, stay for the announcements, please. There are some things that, that we have going on that we need your help with, including mowing lawn here at the, the campus in Flandreau. So please, stay for the announcements and, um, and then have a great rest of the day. God bless. Love you all. Can't wait to meet with you in person sometime in the not-too-distant future. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you for tuning in to the Rescue Church's past messages. To hear our messages live, head to one of our physical campuses. If you'd like to learn more about the Rescue Church, please visit us online at therescuechurch.com.